Okay, so a long time ago, back in the early days of starting my YouTube channel, I was going to start another channel called Let's Make One, and I started filming some stuff and just didn't follow through with it because the gun channel got to be enough to keep me pretty busy. And I made a vest, and I actually gave it away, and it was made from this material, which I believe is the exact same material made used in Russell Crowe's vest in the movie 310 to Yuma. Well, I had enough material to make two vests, and I actually, I finished one of them, and like I said, sent it off, and I cut out some parts for a second one, and I ran out of the lining material for the inside of the vest, so I uh, had my wife pick up some more, and then things got in the way, and next thing you know, this got packed away in a tote somewhere. And so it's been probably I'm going to guess about two years ago since I started this vest, same way with the other vest I made. Uh, I call it the Doc Holiday vest because it's as close as I could find to the right material for the one that uh, Val Kilmer wore in Tombstone. But I've still got these pieces cut out and unassembled, and I do have some more of the lining material now. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, I need to get this spread out, ironed out a little bit uh, because it's been folded up in a tote for so long that it's kind of wrinkly. And um, I'll get it smoothed out and get to cutting on the parts and pieces for this thing and show you, I guess, the finishing of it almost two years later. Same thing with the other vest. I actually filmed the beginnings of them about uh, the same day, maybe within the same weekend anyways. And uh, I'm finally going to get some of these things finished up. I also, over that period of time, have uh, collected a bunch more patterns from uh, Buckaroo Bobbins and some of the historical patterns. So I've got a lot of stuff to get caught up on on these costumes or cowboy gear stuff that I've been working on uh, off and on over a long period of time. Anyways, I'm going to get rolling on this thing and uh, let you see the whole thing. Today we're going to attempt to make the vest that Russell Crowe wore in the movie uh, 310 to Yuma as the character Ben Wade. Now, there was one yard of this material left in the United States. That's all I could find anywhere in the world. And I did a lot of research trying to find it. Now this is, if I was a gambling man, I would say this is probably off the same bolt of material they used to make his vest because it's a very specific pattern and uh, this is a, a silk wool blend it's just a, a really unique pattern. And anyways, I've got one yard of it. I've already made one vest out of this material. And it's, thankfully, it's just the front of the vest that has this pattern on it. The rest of it is just a solid black. So it makes me be able to um, stretch it out a little bit. But we're going to get a pattern cut out here. Now, the only thing I have to do with this material is i got to cut out two of the panels for the front, which luckily I can get them out of here. I do not have enough room for a third. And then I've got to cut out two panels for the back. I've got to do a lining for it. I've got to do pocket welts and the strap for the belt in the back. We're going to get this thing set up, get it cut out, get it sewn together. All right, I got the two front panels cut out. I'm gonna cut out the rest of the stuff and then we'll get to sewing.
Now, I'm one of these guys that grew up back in a time when they taught home ec in schools, and uh, it was a required course. So, um, you know, this is not, uh, some, some people may think this is out of the ordinary, and uh, yeah, maybe it is, but uh, it doesn't bother me a single bit that I know how to sew. In fact, uh, it can be a blessing sometimes because I don't have to go hunt somebody down to fix something for me or whatever. I can do it myself. So I'm going to pin this pattern down to these two pieces of material and I'm pinning them together too and then I'll get to cutting them out. I want to make sure that the two pieces don't move on me. Alright now if you're curious, the pattern I'm using, this is a Simplicity 4762, that's the number of it and it's got several different vests you can make on here and they have adult and child size in here too so if you're a father and son or grandfather and grandson or whatever you want to make a couple of these holsters, it gives you, if you've never picked up a pattern before on the back of it, it'll tell you everything you need to make everything that they show on there and you don't have to make it exactly like that either. Uh, it comes with all the instructions to do it and sometimes the instructions are a little hard to read. Um, but they're all pretty standard. Um, and one of the things I'm going to do that I normally have not done in the past, I usually cut everything out with scissors. I am going to go ahead and use this rotary cutter because I watched somebody else doing some patterns and it looked a whole lot easier. And cutting the patterns out is, to me, the worst part of it anyways. So I'm going to give this a try and see how it does. Yeah, I don't think I like that. I'm going to go ahead and use scissors because that's what I'm used to. And I've got them right here. Maybe I'll try it again. Looks like I just might have a bad spot on my blade. Now I do have the material doubled over, folded over, so I'm cutting through two layers at the same time. That way I don't have to do this twice. All right, we're gonna cut out the welts for the pocket next. I have same thing, I've got two pieces of material there. And I think what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to use the rotary cutter and a straight edge. And that'll just hopefully make it go a little quicker and easier. At least for parts of it. Now the belt pieces I am going to cut out separately because they're two different belts. One piece of pattern, two different belts. And I think my center of my belt is right about where that arrow is, so I want to line this up so that I can get this pattern running right down the center of it. So, this is just a rectangle, and that's the thing with a material with a pattern on it, you want to keep it all lined up, because if you go cutting crooked and stuff, um, you'll know it. All right, same thing. I got to cut another one of these, but this time you'll see a dotted line in there. I got to cut it to where it's a little bit shorter. I got to be pretty careful with this material. This is all I've got, and I think this is all that there is, which is the worst part of it. So if any of you have any of this very same material laying around, contact me and I will more than likely buy it from you. I've got to get this fusible interfacing on here. This is a stabilized fabric with a glue on it and uh, unlike leather, some of these uh, fabrics need some help to uh, stay like they're supposed to be. Alright, now we'll get these trimmed up. Then maybe we can do some sewing. Another nice thing about the interfacing is it'll keep your threads from fraying off of there. All 
Now one of the things I tend to do is jump around a little bit and really you should start with the instructions and, and follow those in order. And if I can grab them here, what I'm gonna do is give you a, like I said, the, the, the patterns all come with instructions and some of them assume that you know a little bit about sewing already. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, and you know, there's, there's the ones that you're gonna make and then on the instructions themselves, it'll have, okay, this is the vest I'm gonna do. So uh, I'm gonna do C on here, which is this one with the single breasted, just four buttons on it, the two pocket welts and no collar. So the instructions will say for vest A, B, C, and D, these are the things you need to do. And the first thing they recommend doing on this is doing the, um, the uh, stay stitching around the neckline there, the curved part of it, and then to make the darts on the front panel there. And then there's tips and all that kind of stuff on there. And then you'll move along to your next instructions, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It depends on which one you're doing. I'm not doing collar B, collar D, I'm doing C, so there's no collar to do on there. And then your next page, let's see, we left off with uh, nine there. So we'll go right to instruction number 10. Uh, we're gonna stitch the center back seam of the vest back from small dot to neck. Now, these little points on here that they have you mark for where you're gonna stop at, where you're gonna attach your um, belt on the back of it and the welts for the pocket and stuff, you, depending on your material, you may or may not be able to mark on them. So there's places on the pattern that show you, you know, for the size that you're doing, I'm doing an extra large. So there's a point right here that says, I'm gonna do my dart from here down to the bottom here. And there's actually a little funky cut at the bottom, which is where those two are gonna get sewn together. So these two dotted lines right here, and they taper. There's the widest point, there's the point up there, and the two points out at the bottom. There's also the marks on here for where the welt is gonna go for the pocket. So what you can do, this material does not mark very well on it. And I don't know if you can see this, but I've got some random threads just kind of sticking through here. And I had forgot that I'd done this when I originally cut this pattern out. So I saw these loose threads and I started to pull them out. I went, wait a minute, that's where I marked it. So there's the point of my dart on the front and these two right here, this one and this one is the widest point. So those get sewn together and then down at this little funky cut at the bottom, those are gonna match up. And then this set of threads here and this set is uh, where the welt will attach once I get it sewn together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just like the instructions say, and like I said, I kind of jump around because I've done one or two of these before. So I kind of do the ones that are the easiest first, but I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get my machine set up and get this part, the dart sewn together. It's a little tricky because you have to fold it over at those points and they're a little harder to see on the back side here because if the thread is where this design is, it looks different on the back and it's hard to see the thread. So I'll have to find those. Actually, that one is right there. I've got one right there and the other one I think is in here somewhere. I'll get that all done up and then get that dart sewn in both sides. And I went ahead and put all my threads back in the other side too so I know where everything's at. Mark this just exactly like your pattern shows because if you don't, it will affect the outcome and I'm sure mine's not gonna be perfect. All right, now I did buy myself a new sewing machine. The one that I actually started this with and the, the other uh, vest I did was, uh, it was a embroidery and sewing machine that my wife and I bought many years ago, probably about 12 or 14 years ago. And um, it sews nicely, but I wanted something that was simple, no computerized anything. This is a Singer Heavy Duty, um, I think it's a 6380 or something like that with the extended table on it. So it's a pretty nice machine. And like I said, nothing fancy on it. It will do a zigzag stitch. It'll do a couple different patterns and stuff, but that's it. And that's what I wanted. So what I got to do here is I'm going to wind up a new bobbin, get my old bobbin out of here. This is what I was using on the other vest I did. And uh, I'm going to get a bobbin wound up with some black thread. And I've got one of the big spools on there that, uh, we used with the embroidery machine and um, it's got a lot of thread on it. Then I'll go ahead and get the uh, the machine threaded and there's a diagram on the top. If you've never operated a sewing machine before they're not that difficult. Um, there are a lot of tips and tricks you can learn 
but this one is really easy to thread until you get down to the needle part of it. But there's a specific path that's got to follow and you definitely want to make sure it is done correctly, even if it is a pain. And this one does have a needle threading option. You got to get the needle up to its highest point. And I was doing a zigzag stitch last, so I'm going to get that straight in the center. My needle up at its highest point. Then there's a little lever that pulls down underneath there for you to um, get your thread through that needle. Otherwise, it's kind of tricky. That definitely makes it a whole lot easier. And same thing with your bobbin. There's a little pattern, a little diagram on your cover right there. Set it down near the right way. Make sure your thread is turned the right direction. Then you should be able to hold your thread that's on your needle. Go ahead and rotate your hand wheel and it will pull your bobbin thread up through the plate there. I like to start mine off to the left because most of my, my material, I'm sorry, start my thread off to the right because most of my material is going to be on the left. Now I'm going to get that dart sewn in there and then I can move on to the next steps. Now I want to sew from here from the bottom upward to it because I want to sew off of where my point is there because I have to tie that instead of back stitching it. So we'll get this thing started. Now I want to leave myself a little bit of thread there because on the end here, since I didn't back stitch it, it can come unraveled. So you want to take these tails here, get them untwisted, and then we're going to tie a knot in it or two. And we're just going to leave that thread in there. Now when I fold this out, I'm going to have to iron that so that dart lays kind of flat. And then all these little extra threads here, I can pull right on out of there, at least the ones for the dart. Not the ones for the welt yet because I don't have the welt sewn on there. All right, to the iron. All right, now that I got my darts sewn on the front there, I need to uh, do a stay stitch. Now this is the collar part right here. And it's just a stitch that's going to be, uh, it's going to stay there permanently. It's not going to be seen. So we're going to do about a half inch. Most patterns are set up to do three or five eighths of a inch seam allowance. And on this one, it's the same thing, five eighths of an inch. And on here, we're going to do a half inch seam allowance on here. And just this permanent stitch stays in there just to help keep that neckline from getting kind of stretched out. Now the next thing we can do is put our welts on there, but the welts have to be sewn together a certain way before you uh, actually put them on there. Now I've done a contrasting material for the welts. I've done them the same as the, uh, the material that's going to be used on the back of it. And I do have some little white dots marked on there to where these are going to get stitched onto there. And I think I'm going to go ahead and iron them. Two most important tools when you're sewing is a sewing machine. You can hand stitch it if you want to. I don't want to, that's a lot of stitching. And an iron. An iron is really, really handy uh, with stuff like this because when you fight a piece of material, it's a whole lot easier when it's nice and flat. That's one of the things I like about leather better than I do fabric because leather usually always stays flat. To the iron again. Alright, the welts are sewn together and these seams are trimmed. Now I gotta iron these things the other way. Alright, now that I got the welts cut out, sewn together, and turned right side out, uh, I'm gonna sew them onto the front panel there. I've got my threads in there where it goes, 
And what I got to do is it's going to look wrong the way this is on there, but I got to sew it between those two points there. And I'm going to sew just the horizontal run on there. And then when I flip it up, then it'll be the right way. The pockets, uh, the, the welt will be the right way. And then the vertical, the sides of it will be vertical, but staggered like that. It'll make a little more sense when I got it done. All right, now I want to keep this as straight, as even as I can, and I also want to pull it because I'm going to be sewing across that dart. That dart should be tucked toward the back. We'll verify that. Yep. And then I'm going to go for it. All right, I can pull my temporary threads out of there. And then I can take and flip this up. I'm going to take it back to the iron again and then iron it flipped up like that so it's less stress on my actual panel and to make it easier to sew the vertical pieces on there. Back to the iron. Okay so I've got my two front panels done. I got my stay stitches in the collar line there and I've got my two welts on there as well as the darts that go up the side there and those darts are just to kind of give it a little more of a curve for your waist. Maybe I should have added a panel on mine for the belly. But either way, I'm gonna make it like the pattern says. The pocket welts are on there, the darts are in there. The next thing I gotta do is I'm gonna go ahead and stitch up these two pieces right here for the belt that goes on the back. And they get stitched right sides together, trimmed up. And I might make them just a little bit narrower than what it says in the pattern because the buckles I got that go on the back there for the adjustment are probably just a little bit narrower than what it says on there. But we'll move on to that next. Okay, we're gonna get these belts sewn together for the back of it there. Here's one of the buckles that goes on it. And what I wanna do is I want that stripe to be in the center of the belt. So I'm gonna sew it just a little bit different. And it looks like the two lines that are alongside that pattern there are just about the right width, maybe slightly more. So I've got this folded over and I pressed it so that it's pretty close to where it needs to be, uh, at least closer than what it would have been if I had sewn it this width. Now the instructions say to sew it to a 3 8 seam and then you're going to cut it down to a um, quarter inch when you turn it inside out. And that is fun to turn inside out too. So what I'm going to do is get the machine fired up here and get the gas pedal where I want it. Get my glasses on so I can see it. And then I'm going to sew pretty close that where I've got this folded, I want my stitch line to be about the same distance away from that line. So I'll go ahead and get that done up. And then we're going to sew down one long side and across the end there. Going to back stitch it a little bit. And then go for it. And go ahead and lift the needle up. Make sure your needle's all the way up at the top and your, I can't remember what you call that piece there, is all the way up too. That releases all your tension off of the threads there. Get that trimmed up. And we'll set this one off to the side and get the long one done up the same way. All right, now turning these parts inside out or right side out is a pain. And we'll start with the shorter one. But one of the things my wife showed me is she gave me one of these. It's a metal chopstick. It's got rounded ends on it, both the large and the small, and it's a lot easier to turn these things right side out. First thing I got to do, though, is I got to trim this seam up a little bit because all that extra bulk is just going to be inside there and make it really hard to, uh, to lay flat. So the instructions say to trim it to a quarter of an inch. And one of the things you also want to do is trim your corner and get it pretty close without cutting your threads because that'll lessen the amount of bulk that's inside there too. All right. Now, like I said, this part is a pain to get turned right side out. All right, there's one. I'm going to put that narrow end in there and try to get in those corners and push those corners out without damaging or poking through there. And that's pretty close right there. A little work with the iron and it'll get it flattened right back out where it needs to be. 
All right, I've got my two belt pieces pressed flat. So what I'm going to do is take the shorter one, which is the right belt, and go ahead and loop it through that little buckle right there and pull about an inch of it through there. This gets to be a little bit of a pain because you're so close now to the uh, presser foot on the sewing machine. But we'll get it in there. And you're going to have four layers of thickness where your seam is on the lengthwise of the belt. So we're going to try to get it in there and get it sewn without getting everything in a bind. And that stitching will be covered up by the other piece of the belt that's going to go through there. Now we are not going to sew this on to the backing yet because I need to get the backing sewn together and these will just kind of get in the way. And then that is going to be the outside of the vest. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this over to the iron and press that seam flat and then move on. I got to put the fronts onto there and they're going to get attached right up here at the top at the shoulders. Okay, so I've got the back of it laid out here and I've got my two fronts here. So I am going to pin these together and I need to do it uh, right sides together. So let me flip this over. And then I will put the right sides, which means the uh, outside that you're going to see. We're going to put those together first. And then we'll pin those. And we'll go ahead and put the other side. All right, we'll get that stitched up next. All right, once you got the shoulder seam stitched up there, now you're starting to get a vest here. So I've got the front panels made up. I did put a fusible uh, uh, lining on the inside of it there to kind of stabilize this fabric, give it a little more body to it and everything. And uh, now I've got to do the liner the same way, and then it gets stitched all the way around. Lots of pins involved in that. Let's get it going. All right, there's the liner part of it. Same thing. It's just like making two vests. I sewed the uh, wrong or the right sides together, and then I, I sewed the backs, the right sides together at the shoulder seams. So now I got to pin this thing together all the way around, right sides together, and I'm going to make a big bag out of it with the sides of it being open, and then I got to turn it inside out and then sew up those sides, and that's just about it. All right, now here comes the fun part where you're going to stab yourself a hundred times with the needles, but um, the pins, but that's just the way it is. We're going to get these top seams lined up pretty close to it anyways. Everything should line up if you sewed everything together right, or at least pretty darn close to it. And we're going to pin the lining to the front of it, and we're going to do it right sides together. So it's inside out right now, and it's going to take a lot of pins to go around this thing because you want to make sure it doesn't move on you. Now, the only part you're not going to pin or sew is this side here. That's the sides that go down your waist there. If you get to a point here like where the seams match, if they don't line up, unpin it, redo it, make sure they do line up. That's what you want because that's, it's not going to show on the, you know, you're not going to be able to tell, but it might lay a little bit different. All right, I've got a whole bunch of pins in this thing. Now I'm going to take it over there, put it on the sewing machine, and stick myself a whole bunch of times. Not because I want to, though. But I've got this side open this side open and these two sides here open and we'll get to sewing the rest of it. So I've got uh, one, two, three, four seams to do. It doesn't really matter which one you start on, just start. I'm going to start with the longest one, unfortunately.
All right, I trimmed up the corners a little bit so that when I turn this thing right side in, it will uh, not be so much bulk in there. And then I cut a bunch of relief cuts, especially on the parts that are really curvy, to eliminate some of that bulk too, because this will be on the inside of the curve when I turn it right side out. And that's the fun part. Okay, now this is where the fun begins. So this is a pretty much a bag um, with it turned inside out. So what I've got to do now is I've got the sides open, so I'm going to grab the side on one of the front pieces and pull the other side all the way through. So I found if I can get this kind of started inside here, get it traveling in the right direction, and it's got to pass all the way through past the shoulder seams in there too. So it gets to be kind of a pain um, turning this thing right side out. And you just got to take your time with it and get it. So I'll get that started and then reach all the way through and try to grab it. And my hand will not fit through the shoulder seams there. So I've got to kind of scrunch it up so I can get my fingers through the other side and grab a hold of it. Once I've got where I can get a good grip on it, then I can start pulling the outside around it there. All right, once you got all those corners poked out, it's time to iron again. All right, now if you've been paying attention, unlike I was, you realize I did not show putting the belts on there because I didn't put them on there. <clears throat> Now I got to get my pattern back out and mark them out where they go. So they're going to go on there like that. And I'm going to sew them on outward like that. I'll run the steam seam up there and then fold it over and then sew it again real close. That way you don't see that raw edge on there. Let me get the pattern back out and get it marked. Now I got to get these sides put together and then sew that part up. All right, and that gets you the side seam there. And like I said, the inside of it, you have to fold this over and stitch that in there by hand, which I don't like hand stitching on fabric. I like it with leather because I mark out every hole so I know exactly where each one of the threads are gonna go, or needles. All right, so that means that side is sewn together. And same thing, I have to stitch that up. Okay, so now I gotta do the buttonholes on here. I got the inside side seams sewn up and I'm not gonna show you that, that's not my best stitching. Uh, I did a couple, we're gonna do the buttonholes now, so I did a couple practice pieces here just to make sure I got my settings exactly where I want them. And this one is nice and dense there, good width to it and everything. I've already got my button holder set up and the way you do this is you actually put a button in the back of it there and that sets it. And then you got this little lever right here that goes up slides down, you push that back and that lets it know when to switch directions. It already knows that it's set up for a buttonhole because I've got the two knobs over here set up for it. I've got my marks on my material there. I'm going to put uh, four buttons on here and they're going to be centered up on these little designs right here. Uh, I'm going to put it on one, skip two, it'll be on one, skip two, and that's pretty even spacing on here. So I've got a little mark right here that I'm going to line up with a little mark on the top of the buttonhole foot there and got to get this underneath there and I got to get it lined up just right. There is no, well I guess there is a do-over on this if you really want to, but if you got to pull all those stitches out of there, that is a real job. So I'm going to get my mark lined up and it's going to be centered right on that design. So I'm going to make sure that's it. And that should be it right there. Drop my presser foot down. I already got my threads pulled under there. I got to make sure I've got that set where I want it. And it's a one step button holder. So all you got to do is step on the gas and this thing will do it. Hold your tails of your thread there. Make sure everything is lined up. And we're going to give it a go.
And when it's all the way to the end there, you'll have to stop it, otherwise it'll just keep on stitching. And we can pull that out of there. Go ahead and get our threads all trimmed up. And that should be, oops, I missed a thread. That is pretty darn close to right in the center of that design piece here. So I'm gonna move down to my next one, and do the same thing. All right, now the next thing I gotta do is I gotta open the buttonholes up. And we're gonna use a seam ripper, and I'm just gonna poke it right in there, right toward the end. And then there's a little blade inside there, and I'm gonna carefully push that through there and that's going to open that up for me. It's going to cut those threads in between the buttonhole threads. Now I'm not going to go all the way to the other end. I'm going to turn it around and come back the other way because I don't want to risk cutting through those. And I'm just going to go back till I meet the other part and that's it. All right, now the only thing left to do is put the buttons on the other side of it. And for that, I do not need the sewing machine because these uh, just have the little eye on the back of it there. So I'll get the machine out of the way and then get the buttons sewn on. And I actually use some of my leather sewing thread just because it's a lot stronger. I don't have to go through it as many times and it holds really secure. Okay, so normally when you sew a button on like this, you're gonna take your regular small thread and you're gonna go through and through and through. You're gonna make a whole bunch of loops until you get it where it's you know tight up against there. One of the things I like about using my leather thread here, the same thread I use for sewing up leather, is that it's a waxed polyester cord. It's very, very strong. Um, and it will hold really really tight on there so I'll go ahead and make a loop through there and tie it on and then I'm gonna pull that tight and I've got that on there and I'm only gonna make about two passes through here with this because that will be all it'll need and that button shouldn't go anywhere so now I've got three more of them to put on there. Okay, the buttons are on it. And I'm pretty sure I put them on the right side because men's buttons go on the right, the buttonhole goes on the left. And that's the way I got it. And there it is, the Ben Wade vest. All right, everybody, there it is. This is my version of Ben Wade or Russell Crowe, who played Ben Wade in the movie 310 Yuma. This is my version of his vest. It is made out of the same material that his was made out of and probably off the same bolt of fabric that his came from. Uh, the hat band is, is pretty close to what he wore in there, although it's not fit on this hat yet, and this isn't quite the right hat. But the holster is right. This is the Hand of God rig from Will Gormley, and the gun is pretty close to right. This is the Holy Smoker from uh, Cimarron. And you know, I'm trying to put together parts of movie guns and movie stuff, and I like to get as much of it correct as I can. And the vest, I think, is, is pretty darn close anyways. I like it. Uh, I'm not a professional tailor, seamstress, whatever you want to call it, but um, I enjoy doing this kind of stuff anyways. And hopefully I've inspired you to give it a try too. It doesn't take a lot, uh, even that sewing machine I bought specifically to finish this up and for some other projects too. Um, it was not a very expensive machine. It was like 250 bucks. It's plain, simple, nothing fancy on it other than maybe the, the one touch button holder. Um, but it's, it's a good machine and I bought it to do some other leather projects too because it is a heavy duty machine and will handle some light leathers and denims and stuff like that. So I've got some other projects I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do some shirts, I'm gonna do some pants. I'll probably do some more vests, a puff tie, all kind of Old West stuff to kind of go along with the Old West guns that I review on my channel.
I hope you enjoyed taking a look at it and hopefully it'll inspire you to give it a try if you want to. Anyways, if you could reach up here and hit this button to check out some of my other videos, hit this button down here to subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review.